The story of a young farm boy looking to the skies and harboring a dream of flying may not be that unusual, but the way a man's dream comes to fruition can be truly unique. This is a story of taking misfortune and turning it into opportunity. The story of this year's Hall of Fame recipient, Rod Brecken. My aviation beginnings were actually when I was really young, probably in that six to eight range, and uh, we were on the farm, and and uh, I would watch the airplanes fly overhead or the clouds, and dream about actually being able to be up there amongst them at some point in time, never realizing that that would ever actually happen. Among people in aviation, that's a fairly common story. What was different about his experience is he had to put that dream aside and then wait for this mishap to make the dream come true. The reason I actually got in, was able to go into aviation was um, I farmed for a number of years and was injured in an accident. The doctor had told me, I know you're a farmer, but he said, I guess I wouldn't recommend that you continue farming because if you did, you may not be able to walk by the time you're 50. So I thought, well, I've got this childhood dream thing. And Talking to a lot of people that would tell me a story like that while the airplane flew over the house or, you know, and I really wanted to do it. You know, it, it's uh, sometimes that role is really hard to get through. And there's a lot of people that said, I want to. And then there's a lot of people that said, well, I want to and I'm going to get there. And they threw bricks under your wheels, but you got there. You have the dream and you put it back there, but it's always there. And he finally had an opportunity to make it come true. Good for him. In 1987, Rod left the family farm to start his aviation career earning his airframe and power plant certificate from Dakota Aerotech in 1988. When Rod took his first position at Airways Unlimited in West Fargo, the aviation world took note. We all knew about it, and we were paying attention, because good mechanics are essential to what we're trying to do with airplanes. And so it was good news for us. Working as an aircraft mechanic, allowed Rod to be close to planes, and eventually allowed him to fulfill his dream of flying. One of the things that they offered me was the opportunity to learn how to fly. My private pilot's license cost me $50 because they paid for all my airtime, my flight training, my instructors, all of that. That was part of the deal when I took the job was I'd be able to learn how to fly. And I paid for my check ride. So, that's where the $50 came in. <laughs> he went and got his pilot's license so he'd understand, uh, you know, working on airplanes, then talking with pilots, a lot of times the pilot isn't a mechanic or the mechanic isn't a pilot. The conversation kind of wanders around and it makes it a lot easier for the mechanic to understand that direction. And I think, you know, he went out to get that accomplished and he did it. In the years to follow, Rod filled many roles within the aviation world. Mechanic and instructor, his most common positions. But those titles neglect to capture his creativity, his leadership, his influence, and his desire to constantly improve. I guess I'm not content to sit and stay at one thing for a long time. I always look towards learning something new, whether it was technology or whether it was just basic maintenance items that we needed to improve on or make better. That's my drive is to um, try to get better all the time, if you can. I think his success is basically be inquiring mind. <laughs> I think it is, I want to see something new, I want to work with something new, and I'm, I'm not afraid of not anything new. 
This intense and innate passion for learning led him to places he never imagined. His background uh, went from probably turning, turning nuts and bolts on airplanes and then when the GPS first started, he got really enthused about that. And I remember conversations about it because everybody is wondering, where is that gonna fit into aerial application and how is, how is the technology gonna work? And he was on the ground floor of that. It was gonna be uh, interesting because it, nobody really knew how it was gonna work and so forth, but Rod took it on and he worked with people all over the country and world, actually. Miraculously, I think I would have to say, because of that, was invited to be part of a team that went to Russia, and we worked on airplanes over there, installed systems over there, sprayed forests in Siberia. That was a fantastic experience. Rod's ground floor work with GPS systems tapped into his creative engineering side. As he designed mounts, rebuilt instrument panels, and built and installed sunshades. Wow, what's he trying to do now, you know? Um, there was different things that I did that nobody had done before, you know, kind of innovative, trying different things. And Like when I was working on uh, installing GPS systems on airplanes that had never had it before, you had to come up with an idea, you had to come up with a plan and a design to make a, uh, a mount bracket to make this piece of equipment work and function for the pilot and make it airworthy in the end. Throughout his career, in whatever role he served, Rod's pursuit of excellence always followed him. Not because he wanted to win awards, which he did, but because it was a part of his nature. Excellence, tightly woven in his leadership qualities, placed him in the arena of high respect. I can certainly attest that among the commun aviation community, the work that he does is well respected and he deserves that respect. He gets it. Rod is a nose-nonsense kind of person. He, uh, um, he, he'll cut to the chase uh, in a nice way, of course, and he um, has a knack to work, work with people. He's been chairman eight uh, years out of the last 18. You know, you're elected to that spot. So that means people like you. And once in a while, you're kind of looking for punishment <laughs> because it's a hard job to coordinate, uh, you know, a group. And uh, he's, he's always showed the enthusiasm to do it. Rod's done a lot of things in aviation, um, starting as a A&P mechanic, uh, an IA pilot, um, moving into leader positions uh, in in the businesses he worked for, and uh, on the aviation council. Rod was instrumental in getting the Upper Midwest Aviation Symposium moved to Fargo, the first time ever anywhere other than in Bismarck, and it was a huge success. The idea of moving it to Fargo and then circulating around the state to increase the participation, it grew tremendously under his guidance. He had that special quality that made you feel like the tiller was in good hands. It's that quality that when the leader speaks, everyone doesn't feel like they're getting talked into something. It makes you feel like you want to participate. And that defines the difference. Tremendous support, volunteers. These people came because they wanted it to, to be successful in Fargo. And they came, they volunteered their time, and, that, and that's what this organization is founded on, is, organ, is on volunteering your time to make aviation better in North Dakota. From boyhood dream to misfortune, to dream restored and fulfilled, Rod's course 
chartered by a strong commitment to community, has truly influenced the people around him as well as the larger world of aviation. All of this done with a quiet sense of humility and gratitude. Part of uh, Rod's leadership success stems from the fact that he makes people feel so important. He gets to know people, he shows a genuine interest in their lives. He lived in a lot of communities in the state of North Dakota. Each community that he lived in, he planted himself in that community. He shared his talents and made each community better because he was there. Local good doesn't exist without volunteers. I mean, we can't buy and pay for everything. We need to have people that will help us and do things, not just to raise money, but just be there to be an usher, be, sing in the choir, uh, do a, something for a friend, haul somebody someplace. We have to have that because uh, um, that's just the way it has to exist. I, I heard one time, well, you know, there's a whole bunch of nice guys out there. Well, Rod's one nice guy, and that makes a difference. Rod has a lot of friends, and he has a lot of family. Rod has 15 grandchildren, which I'm sure he makes every one of them feel special. Rod just made a lot of people feel special. whether it was working on a flat tire on an airplane or whether it was working on a GPS system that guided an airplane to a specific point. Uh, I'm proud of that. I think I'm a better person because of it. And I'd like to think that people that worked with me are too. Rod Brecken. Congratulations on your induction into the North Dakota Aviation Hall of Fame.